Hi guys, have a good day. Um, I'm Dr. Jenny Yusuf, physical therapist and doctor of physical therapy, creator and founder of Fishygen PT and Wellness and um, Balance and Fall support group in aging adults. April is um, Parkinson's Awareness Month. And I would like to discuss today the month of April before it ends and to educate our clients and caregivers on knowing more on about the Parkinson's disease. So Parkinson's disease is a chronic neurological disorder and it is a progressive one. So um, I am a certified LSVTB provider. So I have um, wide experience also of treating them and um, I would like to let other people know as well how to manage and how the disease progress and what are the signs and symptoms. So in this kind of talk, the objective is for to have an increased awareness. What is a Parkinson's disease? What are the basic signs and symptoms? And also, um, how can we help? as a physical therapist, all right? So it is a chronic progressive neurological disease. It is a hypokinetic um, movement disorder. So one to two million people in United States of America, um, 60,000 people are newly diagnosed each year, in, just in the United States. So this is according to Parkinson's Foundation, and the ethnicity is more on Hispanics, more on the um, Hispanics compared to Asians or Black. And the average diagnosis is more on around 63% or less than 65 years of age, which is around 10 to 15%. So when we are thinking how it happens and what part of the brain mostly affected, it is more on the anatomy will be more in the basal ganglia. So the dopamine, which is the hormone or the substance that is the chemical substance that is really involved in the Parkinson's disease is dopamine. So if you have a decreased dopamine production and that's how the Parkinson's disease takes place. And dopamine is in the basal ganglia. So dopamine plays a role in smooth controlled movement. So such as in emotions and the reward system and cognition. So when it is um, not working well or if it is reduced, those movement disorders kicks in, such as the different kinds of symptoms that we will talk about, such as bradykinesia, rigidity, tremors, things like that. I will talk about more about it. So regarding the basal ganglia, they are a collection of the nucleus found there. So, and the substantia nigra is where it's really is located on the midbrain. And that's where we have those in the part of the basal ganglia. So it has a big function and important role. The part of the brain, the basal ganglia is important in programming our motor movement. So it involves in body orientation, task cognition. So when we will think, how does it happen? So there's a death in the dopamine producing cells in the substantia nigra, which is part of the basal ganglia. And now what's happening, the cell death occurs and now there will be 60 to 80% dopamine producing cells dies, which how it happens to Parkinson's disease takes place. So there's a decrease, some of them are dopamine cells are being lost. So once the dopamine decrease, there will be a direct pathway of decrease in motor activity. So just simply like that. There are different stages. It can be um, stages of Parkinson's disease will be more on what we call as Hohenjahr and also there's a BRAC stages, but they are more on involved 
more on the functional or the neurological stages. So on the stage, first stage, first is more on the olfactory and um, autonomic disturbances will be more involved. As you can see, we have um, articles in the balance and fall support group regarding the peanut butter test and trying to diagnose Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease risk. When the, par the peanut butter test is that the client is being um, asked to smell the peanut butter are around 10 feet involvement and then usually the right and then later on the left something like that and then um, if the client has difficulty smelling the or decrease on the sensation of the smell and they are really at high risk for that Alzheimer's and knowing that if they have loss of sensation of smell on the left part because that is or um, link that the um, olfactory lobe is connected on our frontal lobe. So that's why it's another signs and symptoms for Parkinson's disease is the anosmia or loss of uh, smell. So those kicks in on the first and second um, stage of the breath. So the third and fourth stages will be more on sleep and motor disturbances. And then the last stages will be more on emotional cognitive disturbances. So sometimes we're thinking, is it idiopathic or is it more on um, environmental? So it can be environmental factors. If you are, risk, it can be job related. If you're more involved on the pesticides or toxins, herbs in some industrial, so it, you might be at high risk as you age. So how about genetic factors? Five to 10% are genetically involved and they have more on familial onset. So there's the genes that are involved, involved for that. So that's why it's genetically involved. So how about um, the agricultural? So these are increased risk if you are involved in some chemicals in the agricultural, industrial solvents, and then some if you have also head injuries, trauma, um, depression, obesity, so some of those. So there is a, what we call as alpha cysteinoclein protein, which is present in the dopamine neurons. So these are clumps called Lewy bodies. That's why we have a specific Parkinson, uh, Parkinsonism and Parkinsonia, Parkinsonian disease such as Lewy body dementia. You remember if there, it is a kind of dementia, but they showed some signs of symptoms of tremors and also movement disorders because the Lewy body is affected. That's why, but it adds also some problems in their brain. That's why they call it Lewy body dementia. But it is the... Uh, what do you call this? The misfolded and the broken down of these cells and the clumps in the dopamine neurons are called Lewy body. So these are some of the things that you can also found in the kinds of dementia. So the things here is how can you diagnose? So the problem here is that as, as the disease progress, there are minimal symptoms that are not very noticeable until the disease is really on the later stage. So the things that they can use to test are like MRI, CAT scan, and also some PET scans for research. So they will first notice that the client has some tremors, and then later on, it will be more significant tremors then loss of balance, rigidity, which is the stiffness of movement, radicinitia is the slowness of movement, and then later on are the mask phase or um, lack of facial expression. So those are some of the motor um, symptoms 
that you can see, but there is also non-motor symptoms for the Parkinson's disease, such as um, apathy. You will see that lack of expression there, also depression, and as I've said, there will be anosmia that will lead on to decrease in what? Um, eagerness to eat. So it will take place later on dehydration. It can be also leads to hypertension. So these are some of those things that we're able to check on. So there are many kinds of Parkinsonism. Secondary cause can be trauma, can be the toxins or stroke and infection, but there are the degenerative disorders such as the Parkinson's disease itself and uh, atypical Parkinsonism um, disorder, which is um, supranucleoposis, palsy, things like that, all right? And there's a lot more that can show that they have those kinds of symptoms. So the typical idiopathic Parkinson's disease, they have the cardinal signs. So the tremor is the dominant um, sign there and also bradykinesia and the rigidity. So the things that we use sometimes, how to diagnose, there are many diagnostic criteria. There, we have even the modified Hohenjahr scale. So they divided it in different scales from one to five. So the first scale will be more on, involved only on the symptoms only is on one side of the body. And then the scale number two of the Hohen Yar scale will be more on bilateral symptoms, but there's still no balance impairment. On the third um, Hohen Yar modified Yohen Hohen Yar scale will be more on there's an impaired postural reflexes already, but they're still physically independent. So the severe type of disability will be more on like what we already seen right now in our cases, our clients, that they're still able to walk, but they're very stiff and they have balance problems. So they have the Parkinson's disease clients has two times at high risk for falls compared to the clients who has no Parkinson's, Parkinson's disease, you know. So um, the that's why it's very important to know the disease, the progression, and the treatment and rationale. So for the fifth um, modification for the Hohen Yar, it is they're more on wheelchair bound already. So it's really need to know the different level or scale for your clients so you know how you will approach your treatment, you know. So the, those are some of the things that we, there are many other skills how to do that. So the patient pathology, they showed some cardiovascular issues. They have musculoskeletal issues, sensory issues, and cognitive issues. So the cardinal signs, as I've said, is what? The tremors. Typically, they have at least um, three to seven cycles per second on the distal finger. This is the most common and cardinal sign of the Parkinson's disease. Some may have postural tremors as well. I have a client that she just moved like this, but nothing on the hand too much. But once she lifts her hands, which is, it will be more evident, but the body, they have a little bit more on movement. And uh, another one is the bradykinesia. So it is characterized by slowness of movement. So here, when they walk, there's a decrease in the arm swing during gait and smiling decrease when there's a, so that's why it's like hypomemia. There is like a stone face or mask face. So among them, it is part of the blood because of the blood recognition. So complex movements are involved. They have difficulty. And how about the stiffness and rigidity? can be cogwheel, so you can still make it full range of motion, but there is like a cogwheel or that pipe rigidity. It is an increase in muscle tone 
causing them to resist or externally imposing joint movements. So it, depend, it depends on the speed on how they move. So the more fast it will be, it's more tight, things like that. So these things affects their balance. And also in addition to that is the postural instability. So it's secondary in their posture, poor posture, the lack of balance, and this will be more common in the later years. So there will be a decrease and changes in the base of support, and then this needs more attention. And dyskinesia, it is an involuntary disorder or movement. Um, it is a movement disorder consists of including diminished voluntary movements and so it's like, um, it's a tics, so similar to tics or Korea. So when you see some people, they have a involuntary movement, something like that. So it can be from slight tremor to uncontrollable more movement of big, big muscles, especially the legs. So it can be affected. So these, some of our, these are the, what we call resources we can find in Parkinson's um, foundation and also some of our Parkinson's um, book and check out also the Parkinson's organization. All right. And I said a while ago that the Parkinson's disease clients has two times more likely to fall. So 70% of them fall once a year. So these are very important to focus. It's more on their weakness, their trunk, their hip extensors. If we know where are their weaknesses, that's as a physical therapist, that's where we're going to focus on that. So the non-motor symptoms we discuss also is more on um, the depression, the apathy, and then these are also they're having also this dysphagia that's where this comes a uh, begin the lsbt loud so the lsbt loud is the first thing before the beat so these are one of the good exercise treatment for specialized for parkinson's disease so another one for the non-motor sleep disorder they have insomnia or excessive daytime sleepiness. I remember that I have a client when we're when I'm coming, especially in the afternoon. He's so sleepy, and then but he has difficulty sleeping um, prior. And then whenever there will be a treatment, um, they are very sleepy. They have also like um, the, that's what will be the complaint of their caregiver, family member. Oh, he's always sleeping. And then, so that's very important. They should be uh, in the proper place so they will not fall on their place when they're about to sleep, things like that. All right. So if they're very sleepy, it's very vital, the technique of exercise you're going to do for them. So I usually use music therapy, so it will be more upbeat. I do high amplitude exercises, make everything big, so that will be uh, able to help, you know. So cognition is also affected. They have loss of initiative, their cognitive um, cases, and they are very slow now. So majority of them develop dementia, 80% of them have developed in the later stage because it is six times higher in patients with Parkinson's disease, knowing that it's also in the frontal lobe affectation uh, of that. So they also have some hallucination, imagine they imagine those things. So the hypokinesia we discussed, this is a hypokinetic disorder and um, they have loss of automatism, like decreasing gait swing, uh, arm swing, decreasing gait, and also smaller staff. And I, I like this. I still remember um, I, I have a client and she said, Jenny, the only thing I have problem is my handwriting. So during my um, courses in the LSVTB, I like the video that they put um, the client 
first is talking in a small voice and then an after treatment, they show the after. So it should be loud. And then also the micrographia. I always check why it happens. The micrographia happens because of the rigidity on their fine motors. So their hands are very stiff. That's why later on their handwriting are also small. So I like the video in which that the client record and the therapist ask the client to record her handwriting, let's say months before. So it's a little bit bigger than usual. So and then later on, as the time progressed, um, he noticed that, so they made the journal. So he noticed that it's become smaller and smaller. So that's why you call micrographia. So after, during the sessions, what I incorporate is more in the, what we call the flickers. You know, when you wash your hands and then you just do like this. Yeah. So that's another thing. That's another exercise. So flickers and another video that I love is like, because of the fine motors are stiff, they took lots of time just unbuttoning their polish shirts. So one video showed daytime the client. So let's say um, they, uh, they button and unbuttoned and they time it, let's say three minutes. And they try it again, just like this. And I always do this to my patient, just for them to show how effective and important this exercise. So they do like this. And after that, it improves a lot. So I really love those exercises, high, uh, high amplitude exercises and everything. I really believe in those. Exercise is medicine. I always incorporate that, that the high amplitude exercises, boxing, big movement, LSVT, by the way, is, um, is from the words acronym Lee Silverman voice technique. So she, Lee Silverman is a patient herself and um, the family just want to continue more education and they develop and they also um, made this, how this happened, the LSVTB by um, Dr. Fox. So these are very, very good um, exercises to apply and to learn. The courses are available. So that's really awesome. So the medications are there, but no proven disease modifying agent at this time. They, we use sometimes some levodopa, carbidopa. So once so they are a mixture of exercise, uh, medication. They also use like MAO inhibitors, ACH for the tremors. So some of them an antiviral. So these maintain the quality of life. So they help to decrease some of the um, movement, tremors, things like that. And there's lots and lots of more technology and research nowadays that they really help you know so the medications decrease the symptoms minimize the complications of the other disease what you call this drug because sometimes they have drug interaction so bottom line I, there will be medications for this, but still exercise or have a very, very influencing effect for these things. So um, I just, as a physical therapist, there are also um, treatment for the DBS or the deep brain stimulators. They use that, especially for dystonia, dyskinesia. So they uh, categorize first and quantify the clients if they're a good candidate. So especially if you have uh, symptoms that is manageable by medications or symptoms responded to dopamine. So that's how they choose the clients. All right, the benefits is really pronounced. I saw the client self when they turn on the control and the tremors wonderfully, it really stopped. And that's really a positive and very enlightening for the family. Imagine on the video, um, they turn on the DBS and the control. First, 
uh, before this is happening and the client wanted to drink and he's unable to eat drink you know so after they turn on the control he's very straight and able to do that so that's wonderful you know especially for the family but it's you know disadvantages it's expensive so first of all if you know somebody any fist uh, any patients with parkinson's disease go ahead refer them for physical therapy um occupational therapists especially speech language pathologists these are a team effort and exercise really help so boxing we use that high amplitude exercises and music as a therapy okay these are very important techniques and skills that we can incorporate for our clients and i hope um you learned a lot in this and this is especially for our parkinson's awareness month so it's me again if you have any question feel free to check us in tissue gen pt and wellness we are also in balance and fall support group in aging adults so thank you so much and if you have any um questions you can dm me and it's me again dr jenny yusuf your physical therapist i'm a doctor of physical therapy board certified clinical specialist in geriatrics and certified exercise expert in aging adults so i'm available um, by telehealth if you have any questions i'm an lsvtb um, certified uh, provider clinician and also we can do some education through an app i can send you some exercise and if you have any questions we can also do a chat so just let me know and we can do some client and caregiver education all right so parkinson's beat the parkinson's parkinson's will not beat you you beat them right okay thanks guys and in our balance and fall support group by the way we have many clinicians which are movement expert as well we have dr michael highland we have dr mike bridge we have other lsvt big certified experts like me in the group and let us know where are you located where where's your state and we can help you connect with them okay so thanks again and have a great day happy um parkinson's disease awareness month all right bye guys so all of these resources are available in parkinson's foundation and also in mayo and uh, mayo clinic and cleveland all right take care bye for now